who is the real and only true God and who can claim to know him? In this video, I will explain why the Hindu concept of God is actually the most complete one and in some sense includes all the other ideas. There are so many ancient traditions which spoke about many different gods. The Greeks and their pantheon, the Romans had a pantheon and so many different traditions have spoken about God who is all pervasive, he's in nature, he's the universe, the great spirit. Then we have the monotheistic religions where they said that there's only one God. Mostly we associate with them the Abrahamic faiths like Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Even though these three religions praise in essence the one and same God, they all fight for supremacy and have an exclusive claim of truth and even fight amongst each another. The Hindus are often condemned by them to believe in a false god or in false gods. Does this accusation have any foundation or is it a mere speaking of ignorance? In Judaism, God has been conceived in many different ways. He is generally called Yahweh and he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and the people of Israel. He has delivered the Israelites from Egypt, from slavery, and he has given the Ten Commandments through Moses. The concept of God in Judaism is quite complex. God is immanent and transcendent. He is the fullness of everything. He is omniscient, omnipotent, infinite, and he is never portrayed in any image. In Christianity, there is the concept of God as the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God has sent his only begotten Son to this world to save humanity from the original sin. And in the Islamic faith, God is Allah, the one and only true God as proclaimed by the last prophet Muhammad. He will save everybody who turns to him and surrenders to him. Like I said before, all of them believe in one and the same God. But despite of that, each of those religions claim to have the final revelation of who that ultimate God is. And therefore, their God is uniting them on one hand and separating them on another hand. This belief of truth in one religion and falsity of another religion creates automatically conflict between the believers and the non-believers, the chosen one and the rejected one, the saved ones and the damned ones. And that is the seed of violence and intolerance. Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma, which is the universal, eternal cosmic law speaks about an ultimate, all-pervading truth. It encompasses everything. It includes every idea of God. It even has branches which are somehow atheistic, not believing in a God as such. Some consider the Absolute to be impersonal and attributeless, while others think of him as a personal deity and the sum total of all auspicious attributes. In the Rig Vedas we find a very beautiful verse which says Ekam Sat Vibraha Bahudavadanti meaning the truth is one but the wise speak of this one truth in many different ways. This does obviously not mean that every claim of truth is automatically true but the one ultimate truth can be depicted and spoken of in many different ways. There's this beautiful story my spiritual master Paramahamsa Vishwananda often tells. Four blind people meet an elephant. 
The first one gets to his trunk and says, oh, what is this? This is a big rope. The second one who has reached his tail says, no, this is a very, very hairy brush. The third one, on the other hand, has reached his leg, touches his leg and says, what are you all talking about? This is a big pillar. And the fourth one has touched the body of the elephant and says, none of you are speaking the truth. This is a big and very warm stone. You see, all four blind people perceive a part of the elephant, but none of them sees the fullness of the elephant. And that is the problem. Now, by perceiving their part, they think they are right and the others are wrong. They might even start fighting amongst themselves who is right. That's why in the Hindu tradition, the idea of God is absolute and there's no need to fight. Oh, that's good for you. That, that's wonderful. I respect all religions of the world. He can be the formless one as well as the personal deity. He can be deprived of attributes as well as the fullness of attributes. In the tradition I follow in Bhakti Marga, we believe in the personal deity, Srimad Narayana. Narayana means so much as the one who is present within everything and everything is present in him. This personal deity is not limited by time and space like everything else we perceive in this material world. No, he is beyond time and space. He is the fullness of everything. In fact, there is nothing a part of him. There is only him and everything is within his cosmic body. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna speaks about Vasudeva Sarvam. Everything is Vasudeva. Everything is Narayana. He is the sum total of all auspicious attributes. He is immanent, present in this material world, pervading and sustaining everything. And at the same time, he transcends all the universes. He is the soul of the soul, the Paramatma, the super soul. He is the Antarayami. He is seated deep inside our heart as the eternal companion of our Atman. Again and again, he incarnates in this material world as the avatar to bring the eternal message, to establish righteousness and to grace and bless all his devotees with his presence and his love. At the same time, he is eternally residing in his spiritual abode, Vaikuntha, the unrestricted realm, which is beyond this material creation. All the different deities in the Hindu pantheon are just parts of him, aspects of him, taking care of different duties, like the rain, like the fire, like the wind, and so on. As you can see, in the Hindu concept of God, every aspect is included. It encompasses everything and at the same time transcends all the ideas. There is no need for conversion or condemnation because the truth is the truth, was the truth and will always be the truth. God is, we are an eternal part of him and we are eternally in a love relationship. It is just a matter of time that we realize that we are eternally in a relationship with God. But sooner or later, all of us will get to that point. This kind of thinking allows us to live peacefully together and that everybody can grow in the love of God in the way they feel most attracted to. Jai Gudev.